Some young children and teens who are being removed from their homes and placed into the care of child services are being put in hotels, Airbnbs, and even offices by Ontario's welfare agencies. Ontario's ombudsman is now launching an independent investigation, and here's why. The number of children in these unlicensed placements, as they're known, has tripled since 2021. Advocates say that this puts vulnerable kids at even further risk of harm. Erwin Elman served as Ontario's child advocate from 2008 until 2019. He's joining us this morning for more on what's behind the move. Good to have you with us. Thank you for inviting me, Henry. So this, although it's new to a lot of people, is not a new scenario. Placing teens and children in unlicensed settings isn't a new practice, but in the past it was viewed as sort of a last resort option while supporting housing was secured. But now the number of children in these settings seems to have spiked. So what's missing from the system that this is increasingly becoming the solution? Well, it is. it hasn't been new. Uh, Placing teens into hotels or Airbnbs for well, uh, a few days, but what's new is the age of the children. He's you know, young as three, living in offices for uh, 12 months. I know a uh, autistic a boy who was 11 who spent 12 months in living as children's aid office on a boot on a, the floor, and uh, the number, as you said, 339 uh, children were in the kind of quote, quote, placements uh, in the last fiscal year. So what's missing, one is the resources for the Children's Day Society to take care of the children that they bring into care. And two, the supports and services for families and, and children at home so that they, they can live at home without needing to approach the Children's Day Society. Is there also an absence of families to provide supportive housing? Well, there is an absence of foster families. Let, let me say that really what's happening in Ontario, and I uh, know people say this is a fact, uh, we're in a perfect storm that uh, services, particularly complex special needs services for families and children have been hollowed out. We have a wait list for autism of 50,000 children. Wow. And then parents are approaching children aid and saying, we can't find the resources we need. Our family was being torn apart. We're not able to give the love and care to our child that the child needs. So please take them Children's Aid. And then on the other side of that form, Children's Aid has been undermined by a six year system redesign, which doesn't uh, make them not know whether they're coming or going, whether to bring children into care or not. And when they do bring children into care, they have nothing to provide them. You know, yesterday I, I was connecting with a, a what, um, I'm connected with me who was, uh, was saying, I'm at my wit's end. I think the only way out is if I kill myself. Oh. And then the child will have to come into care. Um, fortunately, that didn't happen. But my understanding, um, and she's the second mom who's connected with me, but I know others are feeling that kind of stress yeah. and anxiety. It's, it's a mess. Erwin, can you explain that further to us? I know you set up this scenario where there was a young child who lives with autism who was in a, a care worker's office for almost mm -hmm. a year. But for, you know, for young people, for teens who are, are sent to an Airbnb or to a hotel, like what do they do for food? How are they getting to school? Who's checking up on them? What does the care look like for those children that are in, well, uh, not in foster care? Well, what happened, especially uh, the younger ones, if they're over 16 and they're living on their own, uh, a children's aid worker might come to visit them in a hotel room. Um, if they have particular special needs, and and for the younger ones, uh, children's aid has to provide uh, workers with overnight support, 24-hour support. Sometimes two to one if the child has really intense special needs. And the children's aid society don't have the child and youth workers who are trained in order to uh, support these children. So social workers who should be doing child protection work are having to take shifts overnight to really manage the children. You know, young people talk about this situation as them being put into storage. That's their word. And we we bring we intervene in a child's life by saying to them that child you need protection, come with us, we're gonna love and support you and care for you. And what do we do? We end up putting them in an office or a trailer 
in a parking lot of a Children's Day Society or a Airbnb with 24-7 support. It's unconscionable what is happening, and it should be seen as a crisis and an emergency that it is. Uh, Erwin, you've done such a, a vivid job of describing that and setting that up for us. We know that there's an official un investigation underway. They're looking to perhaps overhaul the system. We'll stay in contact with you for further developments on this. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you for having me. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.